Hey everybody, so today I am bringing you my complete guide to dies in Terraria, including the die trader uh, and how to get them, all that stuff, how to craft them, how to make them, how to obtain them if they're not craftable. So dies are used to tint or recolor clothes, armors, accessories, equipment, even pets and grappling hooks and stuff. So um, dies most most of the original basic dyes are crafted from unique dye materials. Uh, also on 1.3 plus for those platforms that have the update uh, as rewards for retrieving strange plants. You get special dyes as rewards. So I am covering all platforms including uh, PC, mobile, console, uh, pre 1.3 platforms and post 1.3 platforms. So um, thing about the pre 1.3 platforms is that they do not have uh, the separate equipment and pet slots so you cannot die pets and equipment uh, certain equipment um, we're talking about this stuff here uh, if you don't have that 1.3 update again the 1.3 update is currently on PC on Xbox one and PS4 it will be coming to mobile and uh, some other versions that will be coming out later such as the Nintendo switch um, and I'm as I say, I'm going to tell you how to craft each of the dies that are craftable, but it would take too long to show them all. So uh, I will actually craft most of those so you can see them being crafted. I'm not going to, you know, go through switching all of these and show you every single die that would just take far too long because there are as many as 110 dies, <laughs> um, at least on this platform. I'll get to that as well. Uh, so uh, also, one thing about platforms, dies are actually not available on 3DS. That's the only platform that does not have dies at all. Um, and as I mentioned, the strange plants quests with the die trader and the special dies that you get from that are only on the platforms that do have that update, uh, the 1.3 plus update. So um, it's also worth noting that with those strange plant quests, uh, those special dies are worth quite a bit of money. So if you find strange plants, get them, trade them in, and you can sell any excess dyes that you don't want or need. Uh, and that is a good way of getting a lot of money. Even on the pre 1.3, the basic um, die crafting materials are worth some money and the, the original basic dyes are worth some money. So it's still a way of making money, but you can make a lot, particularly with the uh, strange plants. So just to be aware of, so the die trader NPC is needed regardless just to be able to craft any dies or, or in fact get any dies, you will need the die trader NPC. Um, he will move in under either of two circumstances. If you have the 1.3 update, um, all you need is actually any strange plant in your inventory and strange plants are uh, these ones here. I have examples of all four actually. So um, this is what they look like and you'll see them like hanging around like that. Um, so there are four types, four colors, and I've just lined them up in here. Uh, there's a red one, an orange one, a purple one, and a sort of greenish bluish one. Um, that's, that's basically what they're going to look like. And you will find them just randomly in the world. You'll want to grab those. Again, those are only on the 1.3 onward uh, platform. Um, if you're not on, if you don't have that update or the other way of getting the die trader, regardless, is to have any of the other die materials in your inventory. So I actually uh, set this up just to show you what some of these are going to look like. Uh, this one hanging from the dirt, that's an orange blood root. Um, this is a, a teal mushroom and a green mushroom and um, this is a yellow marigold and a blueberry bush, <laughs> the blueberries and a sky blue flower over here as well. Those are not all of them, but uh, those are some nice examples. So let's get into um, all that. So again, any one of those in your inventory, if you don't have the 1.3 update, I believe you don't actually need the other requirements since the 1.3 update. I believe you just need to have one of those in your inventory and the die trader will move in. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, since the 1.3 update, uh, either you can get the strange plant in your inventory, any one of those strange plants, or um, you can get any one of these other uh, regular die crafting materials plus you'll need to defeat one of the four pre hard mode uh, major bosses. So those bosses are uh, the Eye of Cthulhu, the Eater of Worlds, the Brain of Cthulhu and Skeletron. Any one of those four defeat them and have a regular die material. That's the other way of getting the die trader to move in since the 1.3 update. Uh, die traders this guy down here with the the purple turban um, you can talk to him he will 
uh, sell you a silver die at any time. Uh, he will always have the silver die available. Um, if you are on a multiplayer server, he will also have the team die available, and he will also sell you the uh, die that, which is up there. Um, again, since the 1.3 update, he also sells some other extra stuff. Uh, he sells you the brown die always now, so I've got the silver die and the brown die. I went ahead and bought those from him. Um, and plus, during a full moon, he will sell you the shadow die and the negative die as well uh, since the 1.3 update. So um, another thing worth noting is according to the uh, wiki, um, there are a total of <laughs> 110 dies since the 1.3 update. If you're on a platform that doesn't have it, uh, there are a total of 68 dies on the uh, previous um, pre 1.3 platforms. So that's a lot of dies. Again, why I'm not going to show you every single one, but let's talk about the craftable dies. So um, there are 13 basic craftable dies. One is the yellow die. I'm just going to go through them one by one. So yellow die is this yellow marigold right here. Uh, the yellow marigold is found on regular forest grass at or near the surface. And you will just need to use your pickaxe or drill and grab that up. And this is the die vat, which you buy from the die trader. You just go to that and you can see I can now make yellow die from that yellow marigold. Simple as that. Um, so then there's 12 others. <laughs> there's lime dye, which uh, I actually do not have. Um, well, you can't really show that here uh, because the lime kelp is the ingredient that you'll need for lime dye. And the lime kelp is found in liquids, mostly in water, in the underground and cavern levels. Um, it's actually uh, kind of hard to find sometimes. It's kind of hard to spot in particular. Uh, it kind of blends in a bit, a little difficult to find. Uh, you can use a spelunker potion or a magic glow stick um, to reveal. They will reveal treasure and it is considered treasure, so it will show up. But that is the lime kelp over here. Got some of that and uh, that's what it kind of looks like. <laughs> and uh, that will allow you to make lime dye. So uh, now that I have this chest open, I can show you just how many there are that I can craft. Um, so this is the original 13, your basic colors. And then as well, um, there's the silver and the brown. So those are sort of your base dyes. Um, so lime dye, here we go, lime kelp. I'm going to make uh, three of those. I want to keep one of each material in here. So uh, actually, let's make some more yellow as well. And uh, then the third one I'm going to talk about is the green dye. The green dye comes from the green mushroom, which uh, again, you can see here. Um, so there's the teal mushroom I was talking about. Actually, no, that's the one I'm going to talk about. So the green mushroom and the teal mushroom actually are both found in bare dirt, uh, normally at the underground and cavern layers. So that's why this dirt does not have any grass on it because normally they will not grow on grass. Although I did find one in the jungle on some jungle grass. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess things can happen, but they're normally found um, on bare dirt in the underground and cavern layers. And again, you will just use your um, pickaxe or drill to remove them and keep them in your inventory. Go to your die vat and you can make those dyes. So lime dye, uh, we did that. Green dye is from the green mushroom. Let's do that. And um, teal dye from the teal mushroom, which is that sort of taller, bigger looking one. We'll do that. And uh, moving right along, next one is the cyan dye. So the cyan dye comes from um, the cyan husk, which is dropped by cyan beetles found in the underground snow biome. Oh, um, yeah, I actually, one little thing I accidentally skipped. The lime kelp, the one that I was talking about that's mostly underwater in the underground and cavern layers, it's most common in the underground snow biome. Uh, it can also spawn in the ocean, so that'll help you with finding that uh, lime kelp. So back to uh, the cyan dye. Cyan husks dropped by cyan beetles, also in the underground snow biome, uh, is the, the place where you will find those exclusively in that case. Um, and this is what the husks look like. And there are actually three types of husks from three different types of beetles. I'll get to the other two. Uh, they're just found in different places. Uh, but let's go ahead and craft some of those. And that's your cyan dye. Um, 
there's a sky blue dye, which is from these sky blue flowers. Again, I put one of those on uh, some jungle grass over here because the sky blue flower is found exclusively in jungle grass, both above and below ground. Uh, but that's what it's gonna look like. It's this little um, nice blue flower. And as usual, you just remove that with your pickaxe or your drill. And so I got a few of those. Let's make some sky blue dye. Bam. And uh, also another one that you're gonna look for uh, is the blue berries, which are found in any type of grass, not just forest grass or um, jungle grass. Uh, again, the yellow marigold is found exclusively in regular forest grass. The uh, sky blue flower is found exclusively in jungle grass, but the blue berries are found in any type of grass, and that's this little bush. And there are a lot of weird little bush looking things, so it's kind of hard to spot. Um, that's why I made sure to put one here for you so you can see. It's this little thing, and that gives you blue berries, which you can use to craft blue dye, regular blue dye. And so let's make a couple of those. And then um, <laughs> I'm kind of going sort of in order of, you can see the, the gradient of color here. Um, purple dye is made from purple mucus dropped by sea snails in the ocean. So sea snails are pretty rare, um, fairly rare. And this is what that looks like, uh, the drop itself, the purple mucus. You can see it's, it's a misspelling of actual mucus. And that is used to make purple dye. Um, one way of finding those a little easier is, and something that you might want to avoid anyway, if you have a solar eclipse or if you trigger a solar eclipse with a solar tablet, that's actually a good time for uh, farming um, the sea snails in the ocean. It's also uh, a good time for finding squids, which we'll get to, um, because they are a fairly low rate spawn in the ocean. Uh, it's probably a little easier to find them in pre-hard mode because there are a few fewer enemies there maybe, but um, generally um, they're a pretty low spawn rate enemy, so you might have to spend some time in the ocean. You might need something to help you breathe underwater, like my lovely uh, celestial shell, <laughs> um, or a Neptune shell, or just a potion. But anyway, you're gonna have to spend some time in the ocean to get these probably, or you might just get them by accident, but um, purple mucus from the sea snails in the ocean. That's how you make purple dye and bam, there we go. Now again, speaking of the other types of husks, there's the violet husk used to make violet dye and the violet husk is from lac beetles in the underground jungle. So that is where you will find them. Uh, again, the beetles can be sometimes tough to find, but then if you spend enough time in the biomes, eventually you'll probably get them anyway something to be aware of. And uh, then there is a pink dye from the pink prickly pear. And you can kind of see what this looks like, but basically you're gonna have a small little pink prickly pear sticking on top of cactuses in the desert. And I did find some in the hallow desert, so I guess it doesn't matter which type of cactus or which type of desert, but uh, you will find these on top of some of the cactuses and you can just remove, you don't have to actually break down the whole cactus, you can just take the prickly pear itself off of the cactus and that will allow you to make your pink dye. Bam, pink dye. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's see, we've got two more here, um, actually three more. We've got a red dye from red husks. Again, a similar idea where um, there's a type of beetle. It's called the cochineal beetle or cochineal beetle or cochineal beetle, I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's a type of beetle and it's actually, I think it's based on a real beetle um, as are one or two of the others. Uh, but you will find those beetles, there are red beetles in the cavern layer when you're underground and they will give you the red husk. Again, it's actually a fairly rare spawn rate, but you're gonna probably spend a lot of time in the cavern layer, so you're probably gonna get some of these. And that's what you use to make your red dye. Uh, and then you have your orange dye, which is from your orange blood root. That is this. And as you can see, it hangs from bare dirt. Uh, it's normally found in the underground and cavern, which is where you will normally find bare dirt. And uh, so it will be hanging from a bare dirt ceiling. Um, and you'll normally find it underground in the caverns and you will just grab that and that is used to make your orange dye. And you'll notice the number of dyes I can craft is expanding as I get more of these dyes, which, which will get to all the other dyes you can craft based on 
the dyes you already have. So uh, that's going to be a thing. Um, and also the last uh, basic craftable dye from an actual regular ingredient that you find is the black dye, which is made from black ink that you get from squids in the ocean. Squids are a little more common than those sea snails, um, so you shouldn't probably have too much trouble. But again, if you need to farm them or if you want to farm them, a uh, solar eclipse is a good time to drop down the ocean because the solar eclipse enemies mostly won't go in the ocean anyway. But your spawn rate will be increased, and that's why you'll, you'll uh, be able to farm those a little easier at that time. So um, we've got all our basic dyes and including the, the ones that I bought there. And what happens from there is that uh, you can combine, um, excluding the black dye, the other 14 dyes can all be combined with a silver dye to make a bright version. So there's like a bright version and then there's um, a compound dye. Uh, so the bright dyes are all made by combining any one of these three with um, silver. And so you can see those here. You can see bright red. Bright red is red plus silver. Bright orange is orange plus silver. And literally these are just, as you can see, like a brighter version. And so they'll give you kind of a brighter color. And uh, you can even combine silver with silver to get like a bright silver. I think it's, I'm not sure if that's the proper name, but um, basically that's the brightest white-ish grayish white um, dye that you can get is by combining two silver dyes uh, and so that counts as well. So you have your 13 base colors um, plus your silver and you combine any of those to make a bright version. And then beyond that um, you can also combine sets of three different dyes to create. There are three flame dyes, three gradient dyes, and there's a rainbow die. So there are, like, there are three different versions. So those will be uh, da, 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 over here somewhere. Oh no, those are up here. Okay, so, so here we go. There's a flame die. Flame die is red, orange, and yellow. Makes sense, right? And then you have a uh, green flame die, which is yellow, lime, and green. And then you have a blue flame die, which is cyan, sky blue, and blue. So then after the flame dies, you have your gradient dies. Your gradient dies um, are basically a similar idea, but a uh, different sort of color. So you have a yellow gradient die, which is orange, yellow, and lime. Um, and basically these are, these just give you a pattern appearance. Like if I put one of these in here, let's say, um, you can sort of see it, it's kind of hard to see, but it actually puts the three colors sort of all in a row. Um, and flame dye, similar idea. Um, you can see it's, it's kind of, it kind of combines those colors. So just so that you're aware of how that's gonna look, sort of vaguely. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. Um, so there's a yellow gradient dye and then there is a uh, cyan gradient dye which is teal, cyan, and sky blue. And there is a violet gradient dye, which is purple, violet, and pink. And again, it sort of just shows all of those colors. It sort of blends them. Um, and those dyes, actually, the gradient dyes can be combined into the radiant dye. If you have, or the rainbow, <laughs> sorry, dye. Uh, if you combine the yellow, cyan, and violet, uh, violet dies, you get a rainbow die. And that, uh, well, that has all the colors more or less. <laughs> it's a rainbow. So um, once you have all of those as well, uh, if you have two of each uh, f flame die or rainbow die, um, if you combine two of the same flame die, you will get an intense flame die of any of those colors. If you combine two of the rainbow dies, you will get an intense rainbow die. And basically the intense version is just uh, obviously a stronger, brighter uh, sort of version of the same die. So you'll just need two of the same one. Um, that does not apply for the gradient dies. So all of the basic color dies plus the three flame dies can also be combined with either black or silver to make um, what's sort of referred to as compound dyes. 
So it's whatever color and black or whatever color and silver. Um, and I've, I've been kind of counting, just to make it explicit, there are the 13 basic craftable dies. There are the sort of four that you buy uh, from the die trader, uh, depending which platform you're on, one to four, <laughs> um, or one to or two to five, actually, if you include the team die for multiplayer servers. And the team die, by the way, just colors you the color of whatever team you're on, on multiplayer. Um, so, there are 14 that can be combined with silver to make a bright version, which means that's another 14. Uh, there are the seven when you combine all of the three flame dies, the three gradient dies, and the rainbow die. That's seven in total. Um, the intense versions, there are four intense versions. And the compound, this is why I'm talking all these numbers, the compound dies, there are 34 <laughs> compound dies. And uh, so there's whatever color and black, as you can see here, orange and black, yellow and black, lime and black. And it's literally just combining the color and black. And it gives you just a darker version of the color. That's what uh, the and black ones do. <laughs> um, but there's also a uh, and silver versions as well. So you have 14 whatever and black, and then you have um, another 14 whatever and silver. So again, you have orange and silver, yellow and silver, lime and silver, so on. There are 14 of those as well. If you actually, and you can, um, again, you can do silver and silver, but that's considered a bright one. Um, so yeah, there are, there's uh, there's supposed to be 34 of them altogether, and I'm not even sure how that number works out, but apparently there are 34 of them. And uh, basically the whatever color and silver really just gives you, it's really a silver dye with a tinge of that color. It's, um, it's not like, like the whatever in black is a darker version of the color. The whatever in silver is really silver with a tinge of the color. Uh, just to give you an idea of what that's going to look like. So um, those are basically all the ones you can get before the 1.3 update. Now, if you are on a platform that has the 1.3 update, there's an additional seven special or late game craftable dies. And of course, then there are also the strange plant quests, um, which gives you tons of additional ones as well. So let's first show you um, the late game craftable ones. And I'm, I'm going to have to... Uh, stick some of these in here quickly because I don't have enough space otherwise. Um, but basically there are four uh, lunar dies which correspond to the lunar pillars or the celestial pillars during the celestial or lunar events in uh, with the 1.3 update onward. Oh, and yeah, I do have, uh, well, I have a lot of things. But anyway, um, yeah, so there are uh, four of those cr corresponding to each of those pillars and how it works is that you will actually need a, a bottled water, one bottled water and ten of whichever type of fragment. Um, so there's a vortex die, there's a nebula die, there's a stardust die and there's a solar die corresponding to each of the lunar pillars and uh, it's just ten of whatever fragment and a bottle of water. So again here we go, solar die, bottled water and ten solar fragments. Uh, vortex die, bottled water, 10 uh, vortex fragments, nebula die with the nebula fragments, and stardust die with the stardust fragments. So these give you, um, and all the special dies give you like some kind of like, you know, animation or effect. And this is why they're only on the 1.3 update onwards, because uh, while well, they're a little more intensive and some of the earlier platforms might not have the capabilities to do this, that's just, it's sort of a guess. But um, you can see these each have like a sort of interesting, unique uh, look and color and um, effect as well. And uh, yeah, this isn't the best showcase for it, but obviously that's how you do it. And of course you would need like three just to do your basic clothes. And then you would need like additional ones for all of your equipment and stuff. Like I can actually use one of these on my wings. And you can see the, the color of the wings changes and stuff like that. So that's the thing about having all those die slots. You can die all different aspects of your outfit. Um, yeah, let's see. I've also got, yeah, I guess my, uh, yeah, my Ankh shield is actually not equipped per se, but yeah, it'll still, it'll still affect that um, because it's in the vanity slot. 
So you can see I can actually change the color of that, and yeah, that's also my boots as well because they're both there. That's how that stuff works. Anyway, without getting too distracted, um, there's also a void dye. So the void dye is uh, one bottled water as well, and it's with five luminite bars. So you'll have to defeat the Moon Lord to get the luminite to make the luminite bars, uh, and then you can make a void dye from one bottled water and five of those luminite bars. And void dye, again, that's it. It sort of has a black effect and a, like a blurry effect, so you can try to look cool, I guess. <laughs> and uh, and that's what the void dye looks like. And so of course you can uh, you can dye whatever parts you want with those. Um, there are also two more that I'm not going to show you because I don't have the requisite stuff. I did actually. I just put in my pink gel in here. There is a um, pink gel dye. But you need gel dye plus 10 pink gel. Uh, I have the pink gel. I don't have the gel dye because the gel dye is one of the uh, strange plant quest rewards. I didn't happen to get that one, so I can't show you that. Um, another one that I don't have is there's a shifting pearl sands dye, which uh, combines shifting sands dye, which again is a quest reward, with uh, 20 crystal shards, and then you can get shifting pearl sands dye. Uh, so yeah, let's just get on to the strange plants and the quests. Um, and I'm even going to, because I got all these strange plants, I'm going to go to our dye trader and just show you how this works. So uh, yeah, let's just stick these in here as well while we're here. Um, and this is how it's going to work. We, you take your strange plants to your dye trader. My dye trader's here. You just talk to him, you hit strange plant, and for each strange plant that you've got, you just hit that button and he gives you some kind of fancy die. So I just got a mirage die. Um, yeah, and I need to only take one of those if I want to apply it to my head. So there's my pumpkin head, and you can see there's like there's an effect there. It kind of wiggles and stuff, like a mirage, hence mirage, mirage die. Um, and there's lots of these. So... I actually have a bunch of strange plants. Let's just see what I can get there. Ooh, a grim dye, a blue acid dye, a pixie dye, a reflective copper dye. Oh, maybe I ran out. Yeah, okay, I guess that's enough for now. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about what ones are available. So there's 14 um, special strange plant dyes available starting from the beginning of the game. That includes the three acid dyes. I did get one of those, a blue acid dye. There's three different colors. So when I say there's like however many, that's what I mean. Um, so there's a blue acid dye, and it's got like a little acid effect, which you can't see too too well right now. But, um, and yeah, he, he gives you three at a time. So for each strange plant you hand in, he gives you three, which is enough to do your basic outfit. Um, so there's the three acid dyes, six reflective dyes, different kinds of reflective dyes. So I've got a reflective copper dye. Let's show you that one. Um, and so each of these, when I say an acid dye, a reflective dye, these are different effects. And then there are different variations, different colors of them. So there's, from the beginning, three acid dyes, six reflective dyes, and a few other ones, like a glowing mushroom dye, uh, for instance. 14 available from the beginning of the game. Now, once you get to hard mode, uh, there are eight additional dyes that become available from these strange plant requests. So, I mean, you could even stock up on your strange plants. And uh, if you've got all the ones from the beginning, then you can save your strange plants for some later milestone in the game and trade them in then. Uh, there are eight once you get to hard mode, including three v varieties of Hades dyes. <laughs> They're called Hades, and they have like a little sparkly effect above your head. Um, there's another four dyes that become available from the strange plant quests for defeating, after defeating any mechanical boss. Those include the chlorophyte dye, which actually I already have, and there are three living dyes. Um, yeah, so let's show you the chlorophyte dye because I do have that one. That obviously is green. Um, it's kind of bright. It, it's hard to see the effect, but there is a little bit of an effect with that. Um, and all of these strange plant dyes, that's what they are. They're basically animated. They have like special animations that go with the dye, uh, just so you know what's going on. Um, so after defeating any mechanical boss, you get four 
additional ones, Chlorophyte and three living varieties. Then after defeating Plantera, there are another four, uh, including the Pixie die and three varieties of Wisp dies. Um, then, obviously, uh, well, this is all only 1.3 onward, but um, there's a couple uh, things that depend on 1.3 events, which uh, one of which is the Martian Madness. So if you defeat Martian Madness, uh, the Martian die and Midnight Rainbow die also become available from the Strange Plant quests. And finally, um, as far as Strange Plant quests, the last one that becomes available from those quests is Skiff's Blood, which is after you defeat Moon Lord, you have a chance of getting the Skiff's Blood die from the Strange Plant quest. You can also get that one from Expert Hard Mode Treasure Bags when you're playing in Expert and you defeat a Hard Mode boss. Um, so that's all of the dies that will be available from trading in Strange Plants. That being said, it's a chance to get any one of those. Um, so every time you hand in a Strange Plant to the die trader, he will give you randomly one of the ones that are available. So you may need to hand in a lot of Strange Plants to get a specific one that you want uh, because it's just a random chance and you're likely to get duplicates. Like, again, he gives you three at a time. You might get another three of the same one that you already got before. That can certainly happen. It's just a, a, a random selection from the ones that are available each time you hand in a plant. So keep that in mind. Uh, but that's a total of uh, 33 uh, dyes that are available, different types of dyes that are available from those strange plant quests. And there is one last final die uh, that is available only one other way, and that is Loki's die, which is only available from the expert hard mode treasure bags. Like Skiff's Blood, uh, Skiff's Blood you can get either from the strange plants after defeating Moon Lord or any time during hard mode if you're playing an expert and you defeat one of the expert bosses in the treasure bag you have a chance of getting a set of developer items and if you get skiff's set then you get skiff's blood as part of that set uh, that die and loki's die will only come as part of loki's set in the treasure bag for defeating a hard mode boss in expert mode <laughs> so um that obviously sounds a little complicated but that is all of the dies in the game it is a total of 110 dies for the platforms that have the 1.3 update and is 68 dies on uh, let's say old gen or pre 1.3 platforms and that is how many dies are available so um, that's all the dies and that is how you get them all so i hope you like the video thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Bye for now.